Hey Foxes, I'm Abby. And I'm Bonnie. And, and welcome, welcome back, back to World, World News. News. In Brazil, cleanup efforts are underway after flash floods and mudslides have killed at least 171 people. The victims include at least 27 children and teenagers, while more than 120 are still missing, officials say. Repeated downpours have paused the work of emergency teams, with authorities saying it is unlikely anyone will be found alive. About 900 people are being housed in schools and shelters. Workers are digging with spades and shovels through the rubble, with teams of volunteers helping in the efforts. Search efforts have been hindered greatly because it is impossible to bring heavy machinery. Over in China, Hong Kong's government has ordered the testing of all of its 7.5 million citizens as the city battles surging coronavirus infections. Hong Kong schools will also break early for summer. While other parts of the world are learning to live with the disease, China's policy to try to eradicate infection through early testing, detailed contact tracing, and strict quarantine and travel restrictions. All residents will have to undergo three rounds of PCR testing, at intervals of about a week. In Saudi Arabia, a rail company recruiting 30 female train drivers says it has received 28,000 applications. It is the first time such roles have been advertised for women in the conservative Muslim kingdom. For decades, Saudi Arabia has one of the world's lowest female workforce participation rates. In recent years, the government has made efforts to increase the number of women in work. It has also pushed through a number of social reforms, including ending the ban on women driving and easing male guardianship laws to allow women to travel freely. Kuwait's Constitutional Court has overturned a law that criminalized imitation of the opposite sex and was used to prosecute transgender people. The Gulf State Parliament amended Article 198 of the Penal Code in 2007 to make the offense punishable by up to one year in prison and a fine. But last week's court ruling said the amendment violated the Constitution. Amnesty International called the development a major breakthrough for transgender rights in the region. Back with this week's Pro Sports segment is Mac. Hi, I'm Mac, and today I'm back with Pro Sports. On February 25th, Sean McVay announced he would not pursue any of the television opportunities he was given and will continue to be the Rams head coach. The coach was set to meet with Amazon to discuss being offered $100 million to be on Thursday Night Football, which will be on Prime Video this fall. A two-time Olympic gold medalist boxer has joined the fight with the Ukraine in their defense against Russia. Vasily Lomachenko is a world champion in the featherweight, junior featherweight, and lightweight classes, and when the invasion first began, he was in Greece, where his flight back to the Ukraine was grounded. He ended up getting back to the Ukraine by flying into Bucharest and then traveling through Romania. His next fight is June 5th in Melbourne, Australia. With Ukrainian athletes having to find safety in bomb shelters, an open letter was found asking for Russia and Belarus to be banned from the Olympics. The letter was sent to the International Olympic Committee, and it asked that the two countries be removed from the upcoming Paralympic Winter Games. That's all for Pro Sports. Now back to the anchors. Thanks, Mac. President Joe Biden has nominated Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court, calling her one of the nation's brightest legal minds. She will be the first black woman to serve in the court's 233-year history, if confirmed. She would replace liberal Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires at the end of the court's term in June. Ms. Jackson, a federal appeals judge, said on Friday she was humbled by the nomination. New Zealand's parliament unanimously passed a legislation that bans practices intended to forcibly change a personal sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression known as conversion therapy. The bill, which was introduced by the government last year, passed with 112 votes in favor and 8 votes opposed. The government has said practices such as conversion therapy do not work and are widely discredited and cause harm. The legislation also lays out what is not conversion practice and protects the right to express opinion, belief, religious belief, or principle which is not intended to change or suppress a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Back with this week's pop culture segment is Diamond. Hey Foxes and welcome back to another week of pop culture. Britney Spears just got a deal with the publishers to make a book about her rise to fame, her music career, and a tell all about her relationship with her family. This follows her sister's memoir, Things I Should Have Said, released back in January, which was also a tell-all book. Brittany says, I wish you would take a lie detector test so all these masses of people see your line through your teeth about me. Someone who is going through something very similar to Brittany is Amanda Bynes, who you may know from the musical Hairspray. She recently filed a petition to end her conservatorship, which she has been under since 2013. 
While under this conservatorship, she received her associate's degree from the Fashion Institute of Merchandising in L.A. in 2019, and she hopes to start her own fashion line and get back to acting. Kelly Clarkson is legally changing her name to Kelly Brienne. Brienne is her middle name, and she says my new name fully reflects who I am. This follows as her and her now ex-husband divorced. She's ready to rebuild her life with her kids. Have you watched the new series, Inventing Anna? Well, Netflix played the real Anna $320,000 for its portrayal of her story, and she has used most of this money to pay back people she owed money to. Anna Sorokin is a fake heiress who, under the name of Anna Delvey, was able to live under an inheritance of upwards of $60 million. That's all for this week's pop culture. Back to Bonnie and Abby. Thanks, Diamond. The number of civilians killed during Russia's invasion of Ukraine is rising by the day. By Sunday, Ukraine's Human Rights Commissioner put the number of civilian victims alone at 210, including several children. A seven-year-old girl was one of six who died during an attack on the kindergarten class. There have been fatalities in the capital, Kyiv, and 10 members of Ukraine's ethnic Greek community were killed when their village came under fire in the south. More than half a million people have fled their homes to escape the war in Ukraine. The UN says as heavy fighting continues across the country, major Ukrainian cities remain under attack from Russian forces. A government official said dozens of civilians were killed, including a six-year-old girl, as shelling continued into the morning. On the northern border, Ukrainian and Russian officials are meeting for talks for the first time and Ukraine is asking for a ceasefire. Hopes for a breakthrough are slim, but Ukrainian president said there was a small chance to end the war. Germany has just witnessed a truly historic day. During an emergency parliamentary session on Ukraine on Sunday, the Chancellor announced an additional 113 billion U.S. dollars for the Germany army. Within a few days, Vladimir Putin has managed to do what NATO allies have spent years trying to achieve, a massive increase of military spending in Germany. Before Thursday's invasion of Ukraine, such a militaristic stance would have been unacceptable for most Germans. Traditionally, Berlin focuses on diplomacy and dialogue, not military strength. On the first day of Russia's invasions, 13 Ukrainian soldiers were put on a small Ukrainian island called Snake Island to defend it from Russia. There are audio recordings of a Russian warship telling the soldiers to surrender or they would open fire. In response, the Ukrainian soldiers swore at them. The 13 Ukrainian soldiers were believed to be dead but have now been confirmed to be alive and taken hostage by the Russians. The border guards were given posthumous honors by the president. That's all the news we have for you this week, Foxes. Stay informed.